Since Iron Man's introduction all the way back in 1963's Tales of Suspense number 39, we have seen him go up against some of the best villains that Marvel has to offer. You're probably familiar with the Mandarin, Fin Fang Foom, Whiplash, hey, you might even be a fan of Titanium Man and Iron Monger, but there are so many other villains that Iron Man has had to go up against, some that are too good and some that are too bad for you not to know. What is going on all you nerdy folk out there? My name is Jack and welcome back to Top 10 Nerd. You've probably already guessed it, but today we're going to be talking about some of the lesser known Iron Man villains out there that you may or may not have heard of and that will probably not make an appearance outside of the comics anytime soon. Let's get right into it. Number 10, The Actor. Now, I've heard of method actors, but this definitely takes the meaning to a whole other level. An ace infiltrator whose real identity is unknown, that worked for the Russians back when they were an evil empire. Like Spider-Man's nemesis the Chameleon, the actor can perfectly impersonate anyone, and he was quite successful at stealing state secrets until he ran up against Tony Stark. The actor traveled to the United States and disguised as Stark easily entered Stark Industries, where he succeeded in not only obtaining some important blueprints, but also discovered that Tony Stark himself was Iron Man. The actor left feeling satisfied with his work and left cleanup duty to his agents. However, Tony was able to overcome them very easily and ended up traveling to the USSR to pose as the actor to foil their evil plans. And talk about a role reversal, am I right? When the real actor returned to his employer, the Red Barbarian, he was shot right as he came because he was deemed a traitor. This didn't actually kill him though because he later resurfaced to work for the Red Barbarian to once again take down Tony Stark. Why not check him out for yourself in his first appearance in 1963's Tales of Suspense number 42. Number 9, The Melter. Bruno Horgan was once an American industrialist specializing in weapons for the US military until a government inspection revealed he was using shoddy materials, and you can probably guess why that's not really good. Tony Stark scooped up his defense contracts because, you know, his weapons actually worked, and a bankrupt Horgan decided the only rational thing to do was to blame Tony for sabotaging his work and ruining his life. Luckily for him, and unlucky for literally everyone else, he found himself among his ruined company's assets, a weapon prototype that generated a beam capable of melting iron on contact, and this began his evil reign as the Melter. Tony was able to defeat this villain pretty easily, however, he was still deemed enough of a threat to create a new suit made out of aluminum, and good thing he did because in his second encounter with the Melter, that completely saved him. Skip ahead a little bit and we see the Melter return with a new version of his melting ray and team up with Whiplash and the Blizzard to take down Tony Stark under the orders of Justin Hammer. Tony was able to overcome all three of the villains alongside Cave, and Horgan was sent to Rikers Island, where he met a nuclear physicist that helped him further augment his equipment so that it would work against Iron Man's aluminum armor. Armor. Fast forward just a little bit more and we see the Melter reach the end of his journey at the hands of Scourge, who was posing as his assistant. Take a look at this character story for yourself, starting with 1963's Tales of Suspense number 47. Number 8, Gargantus. Before Iron Man found his groove fighting industrial spies and the occasional world conqueror, he was stuck duking it out with alien robots like Gargantus. Created by an unknown and unnamed alien race that had been scouting the Earth for the past 80,000 years, Gargantus was built in the image of a Neanderthal because that was the only species that the aliens had encountered. It first arrived in the town of Granville and used its hypnotizing eyes to conquer the townspeople, but the aliens' plans were quickly foiled by Iron Man, who was alerted by the invasion because one of the young women trapped by Gargantus didn't show up for their date, and nobody stands up Tony Stark, so he knew something was up. After a little back and forth with the robot, Tony figured out that Gargantus was actually a robot and decided to surround it with powerful magnets that tore it apart completely because, you know, Magnets. After the aliens realize that maybe the Earth's defenses are too good, they decide to fly away and we don't hear about them again until 1999's Captain America, Sentinel of Liberty, Volume 1, Number 5. Fun fact, Gargantus is technically the first villain Iron Man ever faced, so why not check it out in its first appearance all the way back in 1963's Tales of Suspense, Number 40, and let me know what you think of this caveman robot in the comments below. Number 7, Termite. I'm sure we all know the classic way that most people gain their powers in comics, you know, an accident happens and instead of dying, they gain abilities. Pretty standard, right? Well, I think Marvel was a little bit tired of that because Neil Donaldson was just born with his ability to disintegrate whatever he touches. After discovering his powers, he was hired by Obadiah Stane to eliminate his competition. However, James Rhodes, the acting Iron Man at the time, quickly got word of this and set out to take the termite down. During his third fight with the villain, the first two ending with the termite escaping, Rhodes was seemingly evenly matched with him until Tony Stark showed up with the mutant power neutralizer and shot the termite with it, removing his powers completely, allowing him to be arrested and taken to jail. Where did this got back to Stane and he hired the Enforcer to take him out. However, the Enforcer was taken out first by the Scourge of the Underworld, so basically the Termite was saved completely by accident. The Termite was later seen sulking in jail and that's really the last we've seen of him. Check out this villain for yourself in his first appearance all the way back in 1984's Iron Man number 189. Number 6, Vibro. 
Alton Vibro was your average seismologist until he fell into the San Andreas Fault while testing an experimental machine, and of course he ends up with super vibrating powers because this is the Marvel Universe, and like I said a little bit ago, if you have an accident in the Marvel Universe, then you're probably going to end up with some sick powers. These powers allowed Alton to generate high-level seismic vibrations and fire them from his hands, causing shockwaves, opening chasms, and generating earthquakes. Thinking his employer Frank and Fortney was to blame for his accident, he sought revenge on him and thus began his villain career as Vibro. After two battles with James Rhodes, the acting Iron Man at the time, Vibro was eventually taken down with the help of Tony Stark in the Mark I Iron Man armor. Vibro hasn't only been a problem for Iron Man though, and he has also gone up against the Falcon, Nomad, S.H.I.E.L.D., the Avengers West Coast, and even Wolverine. We later see him team up with the Mandarin alongside a bunch of other Avengers to once again try and take down the Armored Avenger. Making his first appearance all the way back in 1984's Iron Man number 186, why not give this villain story a read for yourself? Number 5, Doctor Strange. Now, I know what you're thinking, and no, I'm not talking about Stephen Strange, the Sorcerer Supreme and Master of the Mystic Arts. I'm talking about Carlos Strange, who made his first and last appearance all the way back in 1963's Tales of Suspense number 41. Carlos Strange was just your typical mad scientist, creating and concocting all manners of weaponry in his mountain hideout, when a lightning bolt struck him, increasing the electrical energy inside his brain, making him smarter and even madder than before. Six months after the whole lightning incident, Strange built an ultra-frequency transmitter from radio and television parts and use it to take mental control of Iron Man, forcing him to free him from his prison so he can enact his plan to take over the world and just give it to his daughter. Threatening to destroy the entire planet in 24 hours unless every nation surrenders to him, he launched a powerful bomb into the atmosphere to demonstrate just how serious he was. Iron Man quickly found his way to Strange's new hideout in the Atlantic and destroyed his main power source, effectively ruining his plan. With no other option, Strange withdrew and escaped custody and we're honestly not too sure what he's cooking up now. Check out his story for yourself and let me know what you think of his character in the comments below. Number 4, The Chessman. Like so many criminal masterminds out there, Obadiah Stane was a bit too obsessed with the whole chess as a metaphor for controlling life's thing. So much so that he hired assassins who literally dressed themselves as chess pieces, you know, like pawns, bishops, knights, and rooks, with him acting as their king. The knight got a flying robot horse, the rook used a castle full of death traps, and the bishop, well, now that I think about it, he didn't do a whole lot. He was really only able to manipulate his opponent's actions. One by one, the chessmen went up against Iron Man, with none of them actually succeeding in taking him down. However, that didn't seem to be Stane's plan. The string of encounters and events actually led to Tony's addiction to alcohol to worsen, and this allowed him to buy Stark Industries and push Tony out of the Iron Man mantle for a while. Tony eventually got his act together and went up against the chess-themed team once more and emerged victorious, with Stane taking his own life with a repulsor blast. Check out these villainous pawns for yourself, starting with their first appearance in 1982's Iron Man number 163. Number 3, Mr. Doll. Now I know what you're thinking, and no, his first name wasn't Ken, that would just be way too good of a joke. Nathan Dolly was a pretty average dealer in curios and art objects until he came across an extraordinary doll during his time in Africa. He discovered that he could reshape this doll to re resemble whomever he wanted, and that he could cause that person to feel immense pain by manipulating the doll's features. He decided the best way to use his new voodoo doll was to coerce rich business people into legally signing over control of their business to him, which worked pretty great for him until he decided to go after Tony Stark. Tony found it tough to fight against this villain because initially he was unable to withstand the pain caused by the doll. So in true Tony Stark fashion, he built a suit just for the occasion. Now able to withstand the power, Tony used a force beam to change the doll's likeness into that of Mr. Doll's, and the immense pain this caused Mr. Doll caused him to pass out, allowing for his capture and arrest. Fast forward a bit and we see Mr. Doll once again, however this time his consciousness is trapped and split between two mannequins, Jake and William, aka the Brothers Grimm. This didn't last for too long though because he was eventually beaten by Spider-Woman and his consciousness dispersed for good. Take a look at the voodoo doll wielding Mr. Doll for yourself in his first appearance in 1963's Tales of Suspense number 48. Number 2, The Unicorn. Milos Masaryk was a Soviet intelligence agent assigned to security detail at the laboratory of an inventor who was developing advanced weaponry. One of the inventor's projects was a helmet that could discharge destructive energy blasts from something called the Power Horn, and Milos came into possession of this helmet after his inventor hightailed it to the US, thus starting his mission as the Unicorn of avenging the disgrace caused by the inventor's defection. His first encounter with Iron Man really isn't much to write home about since Tony let the villain walk away scot-free. However, several months later, after a not-so-healthy dose of brainwashing and augmentation, Milos returned to the US with the goal of doing whatever it takes to reverse an unfortunate side effect of his treatment. However, Iron Man was able to thwart his plans once again. 
The Unicorn teamed up with the Red Ghost, the Mandarin, and even Titanium Man, all of them promising to find a cure for him if he defeated Iron Man. However, obviously none of them were actually going to follow through with that. Flash forward a bit and we see the Unicorn once again make his way to the US to bring down Stark Tower alongside Spymaster and some other baddies. This was a bit of a weird time for Iron Man and the Unicorn because near the end of this arc, the two actually ended up teaming up to take down Captain Atlas. However, after they were done, they went back to being not so friendly with each other. Take a look at this magically named villain for yourself, starting with their first appearance all the way back in 1964's Tales of Suspense number 56. Number one, the Blood Brothers. Like so many great Marvel heroes before him, there was a brief time when Iron Man was flying around having cosmic adventures with space aliens. When Thanos first appeared in the Iron Man comics, we were introduced to some of his henchmen as well, two of them being the Blood Brothers, Guri and Rahas Blood. The alien siblings acted as Thanos' guardians of his Earth base. However, they were easily defeated by the Thing and Iron Man, and this just disgusted Thanos to the core, so he sent them away for a while to an unknown location. Years later, they made it back to Earth to try and get revenge on Iron Man, but they were defeated once again and ended up locked in Riker's Island. Fast forward a little bit and we see Rahas die and Guri go on solo, eventually becoming a part of the Hood's criminal army. Guri later had his cosmic potential unleashed and this gave him a crazy power up, and he became one of these slaughter lords under the name Brother Blood. Now it's not really said when, but at some point Rahas came back to life and the Blood Brothers reunited once again and joined a new incarnation of the Lethal Legion as a part of a contest that was assembled by the Grand Master. All these fights around the world were thwarted by the Avengers though, including including the Blood Brothers fight in Rome, and the Lethal Legion regrouped, escaped to nowhere, and decided to stay together as a team just to see what they could accomplish together. Check out this villainous brotherly bond for yourself, starting with 1973's Iron Man number 55, and try to name a better duo in the comments. Oh wait. That'll be it for this video, everyone. Got any other lesser known Iron Man villains that you're just dying to hear us talk about? Well, let us know in the comments below, and maybe we'll continue this list with a part two. Don't forget to subscribe to Top 10 Nerd if you haven't already, just to stay up to date on all things nerdy, and while you're at it, why not ring that notification bell so you know whenever we upload a video. As always, my name is Jack, thank you guys so much for watching, and make sure to stay nerdy, my friends.